okay so now we'll come back so the next thing that we have is um, well going back to the same question that we had before which was question number five you want to find now let me write down the question so that based on what we discussed in the previous video that you understand essentially what exactly it is that you want to calculate and then based on that we will basically do the rest okay so the question is find an equation this is question number five find an equation of it of the tangent line to the curve at the at the to the curve to the following curve at the given point right and the curve is basically y is equal to x minus 1 over x minus 2 at the point 3 comma 2 right now I showed you in the previous video that this curve looks something like this this is essentially the curve um, x minus 1 over x minus 2 and you want to find the equation of the line tangent to the graph at this point which is essentially this point over here tangent the tangent line to the graph at this point is well as we know essentially it's the the derivative of the function which means that you can imagine that that basically that this is that along this axis you have the position of the car along this axis you have time and you want to find and if you find essentially the the slope of this line the slope of the line not the not the equation of the line if you find the slope of the line the slope of the line would be essentially the derivative of the function at this point which is the which is the 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 the, the, the instantaneous velocity of the car exactly at this point right which is exactly the the instantaneous velocity of the car exactly at this point so then basically and all of the calculus that you go th that you ever go through is is the exact same situation there is no other situation it's it's always the rate of change and <coughs> the slope of this line is basically the rate of change of position with respect to time for example you could think about that in that in that manner and the rate of change of position with respect to time is called instantaneous velocity so that means that the car is moving along this road in this manner as you can see by this function and you want to know what 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 is the instantaneous velocity of the car exactly at t is equal to three seconds for example or something like that right <clears throat> and when you when you when you have the slope of the line you can of course write the equation of the line as well and the equation of the line you can you can uh, you can use it for different purposes of course right <coughs> so so in order to calculate this what you can do is that you know that the, that, that the derivative of the function you can calculate it in two ways for example you can say that basic the m is equal to f prime of a is equal to the limit of basic the f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero as h approaches zero or you could call it basically the limit of f of x minus f of a 
over x minus a as x approaches a. You could use both of these ways to calculate this, right? Now I'm going to use, for example, this, this, this way over here. I mean, in most cases, it's easier to use this, to use this form over here rather than using this form. Um, we will calculate using both methods and so that you can see essentially what is, the, what is the difference and, 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 and which one you would choose if you were to choose one of these, these different methods. So let's start with this one. Oops, I okay. So if I if I were to start with this method over here, so what I would do is that so we, I want to calculate the in this case essentially since I want to calculate f prime of at the point x is equal to three for example. So then in this case, a is equal to 3, right? So, and I want to calculate f prime of 3, for example, right? And so for this, essentially, then, then based on this formula, I could say that basically f prime of 3 is the same thing as the limit of f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 over basically h as h approaches 0, right? And then you need to calculate uh, essentially the different parts that you see in this formula, meaning that you need to calculate f of 3 plus h, you need to calculate f of 3, and h you don't have to calculate it, and then take the limit, right? Now, since your function is, let's, let's, let's call the function f of x is equal to basically x minus 1 over x minus 2, for example, right? Since the function is this function over here, then f of basically 3 plus h would be the same thing as, instead of x, you would use 3 plus h. So 3 plus h minus 1 over 3 plus h minus 2, which is the same thing as 3 minus 1 is equal to 2, so that's 2 plus h, and 3 minus 1 is equal to... 3 minus, minus 2 is equal to 1, so that's 1 plus h, right? And we know that f of 3 is equal to, f of 3 is equal to 2, because there is a point over here, which is, which is of course, on the graph of the function, it's a given in the, in the problem, so we know that f of 3 is equal to 2, right? We know that f of 3 is equal to, is equal to 2. Now, so as a result, basically f prime of 3 would be the same thing as the limit of f of 3 plus h, which is 2 plus h over 1 plus h minus f of 3, which is minus 2 over h as h approaches 0. And now the only thing that you need to do is calculate the simple limit. Calculate this limit, you can rewrite this as, I will rewrite this separately, so that's 2 plus h over 1 plus h minus 2, which I can write as 1 plus h, take the LCM as 1 plus h here, that's 2 plus h, minus 2 times 1 plus h would be negative 2 minus 2h, and that's the same thing as basic the uh, h minus 2 h is equal to negative h and 2 and 2 you can cancel out over 1 plus h right so this would be the limit of basically negative h over 1 plus h over h as h approaches 0 then basically you can simplify this fraction as negative h over 1 plus h over basic the h, which is the same thing as negative h over 1 plus h times the reciprocal of this, which is 1 by h. So these two you can cancel out. This becomes negative 1 over 1 plus h. So this becomes the limit of basically negative 1 over 1 plus h 
as h approaches 0. As h approaches 0, this becomes negative 1 over 1, which is equal to negative 1. So as a result, f prime of 3, which is equal to m, is equal to negative 1. That's the slope of the line. And of course, we got the, uh, we got the exact same thing when we calculated, when we approximated the, the, the slope of the line here on the calculator, right? So now you want to write the equation of this line, which is again very simple. So when you want to write the equation of the line, you would write it as y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, right? Your m is equal to negative 1. x1, y1 is one point on the line, which is 3, comma 2. So the point is 3, comma, 3, comma 2, right? So then you would write this as y minus 2 is equal to negative 1 times basically x minus 3, which is the same thing as y minus 2 is the same thing as 3 minus x, which is the same thing as y is equal to negative x, and 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. That's the equation of your line, right? So now if I graph this line, it should be the exact same line that we have that, that we have graphed earlier. So y is equal to basically negative x plus 5. And as you can see, the line goes through the exact same point and has a slope negative 1. So it is basically the tangent to the graph of the function at this point. Okay. So this is essentially the... And, and again, if you... If you think about the situation as, uh, if you think about the situation as, um, as over here, as this, essentially this function, if you think of this function as the position function of a, of the car moving along a, moving along the straight road, this axis over here would represent the position of the car along the road. And this axis over here would represent time, right? Now at this point, which is 3 comma 2, what this point means essentially in this, in this particular situation is that at, at t is equal to 3 seconds, the position of the car is, for example, 2 meters along the road, right? And, um, when, when time essentially after one second, then the, the position of the car becomes, for example, uh, 1.49, for example, or 1.5 meters along the road, and so on and so forth, right? Which means that at t is equal to 3 seconds, at t is equal to 3 seconds, you're, you're 2 meters along the road. At t is equal to 4 seconds, you're 1.5 meters along the road, which means that you're going backward, essentially. And you can see that the function is also decreasing, meaning that you're moving backward rather than going forward, right? Which means that your velocity would be a negative value, essentially. Now, that means that there is, between t is equal to 3 seconds and t is equal to 4 seconds, there is some... There is some change in time and there is some change in position, right? And calculus is all about uh, calculating the rate of change. There is nothing more, there is nothing else that you can calculate in calculus. Calculus, the only thing that it does is that it calculates the rate of change for you in different types of situations, right? For different purposes. Sometimes it's velocity, sometimes it's something else, but at any at any rate, it's always the change of rate of some of some value with respect to some other value. So, so essentially, then in this situation, there is some change in time and there is some change in the position, right? Now, if I draw a line, of, if I draw a point over here, which is four comma, for example, four comma one point one point five. There is basically this point over here and there is this point over here, which means that 
at t is equal to 3 seconds, I was at 2 meters along the road. At t is equal to 4 seconds, I was at 1.5 meters along the road. And you know that if I draw a line between these two points, a straight line, the slope of that line would be the average rate of change, or the average velocity essentially, between these two points in time, right? Now, if I want to, if I want to basically, if I want to, to calculate the instantaneous velocity exactly at this point 3 comma 2, what I could do is that I could take this point, which is 4 comma 1.5, and get it closer and closer to the point 3 comma 2, which is this point over here, right? So I do the same thing. I do the exact same thing, meaning that I take essentially a point over here. I have cal already calculated that essentially this line over here. So if I take essentially a point over here, for example, call it A and call it A and and f of A and call this f of x, for example, so that we can work with it. <clears throat> if I take this point over here, you can see that And now suppose that basically I, I draw a line between this point over here and this point over here. How do I do that? I need to basically, uh, that this, that basically the, the, the equation of this line would be basically one of the points is three comma one, right? One of the points is, excuse me, three comma two. And the other point is basically a comma f of a. Right, and I want to draw a line between these two points. So what I could do is that I know that basically that the that essentially the slope of the line that essentially that goes through these two points would be m is the same thing as basically y two minus y one, which is f of a, for example, minus two over x2 minus x1, which is a minus 3, for example. And you take essentially one point on the line, which is, for example, 3 comma 2. So you write over here, for example, uh, you can write it as y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So take x1, y1 as this point over here, you would have y minus 2 is equal to m, which is f of a minus 2 over a minus 3, x minus x1 would be x minus, x minus basically the 3 essentially over here, right? So I can write this as, um, I can write this as y minus 2 is the same thing as basically f of a minus 2 times x minus 3 over a minus 3. That's the equation of the line that goes through those two points, right? So now let's, let's write it down over there. To write this down, I write over here, um, I write over here basically y minus 2, y minus 2 is equal to basically f of a, minus 2 divided by a minus 3 times basic d x minus 3, right? So now you can see that basically I have this, this, this line that goes through this, these two points, right? So now I can you can see that as I change, essentially, as I get, and this is essentially the point at which I want to find the instantaneous velocity of the, of the, of the car, essentially, right? So, so what I need to do is that I need to take this point and get it closer and closer to this point, 
and see and 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 what you need to do is you need to see essentially watch what happens as i get this this point closer and closer to this point you see over here as i get closer and closer to this point the slope of this line is getting closer and closer to the slope of this line you see over here i get closer and closer to the slope of this line and then eventually i will i will end up at 3 comma 2 right so this is the limiting process that the, the, the system that that we have made over here is essentially the limiting process you pick essentially some value for example some x and f of x on the line and then draw essentially find the, the essentially the the um, the slope of this line over here and then and then the slope of that line essentially you you have to essentially you have to make that that point closer and closer to this point over here and as you do so as you as you get this point essentially closer and closer to this point the slope of the line is getting closer and closer to the slope of this line over here and when you get to that point when you get to that exact point where you want to be the um <clears throat> the slope of the line represents essentially the instantaneous velocity of the car exactly at the point three comma two right so that's essentially the the whole situation whenever you're you whenever you're calculating basically um whenever you're calculating whenever you're using this 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 formula or or essentially this and the, the, the other variation of this which is which is basically f prime of a is equal to the limit of basically f of x minus f of f of a over x minus a as x approaches a whenever you're 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 using either this one this formula or this formula you're essentially going through the exact same process it's it's the exact same thing right okay and these things uh, and these essentially these this, this this concept you have to understand it once and uh, then um, then essentially the whole essentially your whole calculus whatever you whatever you happen to do in calculus becomes essentially only two ideas it's not going to be meaning that for example you get the calculus book it's 1300 pages it's exact I, I mean what, what I mean to say is that all of those 1300 pages is only two simple ideas understand those two simple ideas even if it happens to be 6000 pages it's going to be the same thing over and over again okay okay now let's let's do another example here question number question number 6 Now, uh, question number six is again: you want to find the tangent to the to the graph of this function, which is y is equal to two times x cubed minus five times x at the point negative one comma three. Now, in the previous example, I wanted to calculate essentially the the slope in two different ways, but I forgot. But that's that's okay. So again, you want to do the same thing, meaning that you want to calculate the the slope of the line, essentially going through the going through the graph of the function exactly at this point, and then based on that, you want to write the equation of the line. So that, that's that's all that you want to do here, right? So then you you can use the same formula: m is equal to f prime of a is equal to the limit of, for example, f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero right then you can use this formula to calculate the slope of the line okay so now basically what you can do is that you need to f essentially the point 
uh, in this case a is equal to negative 1 and uh, f of a f of a would be equal to f of negative 1 which is equal to 3 right and f of a plus h <coughs> is the same thing as f of negative 1 plus h which is the same thing as 2 times negative 1 plus h raised to the third power minus 5 times negative 1 plus h and you need to expand all of this <coughs> And that's the same thing as um, basically a plus um, x plus y or a plus b. a plus b raised to the third power is the same thing as a cube plus b cube plus 3 times a squared b plus 3ab squared, right? So based on this, you can, can't, you can expand this part over here, which is the same thing as 2 times a cube which is negative 1 cube which is the same thing as negative 1 <coughs> plus b cube which is h cube now 3a squared b would be 3a squared which is 1 times h which is 3 3h so that's 3 times h and 3ab squared would be the same thing as 3 a b squared so negative 1 times h squared which is the same thing as negative 3 h squared now this is negative 1 negative 5 times negative 1 is equal to positive 5 negative 5 times h and this is the same thing as negative 2 plus 2 times h cube plus 6 times h minus 6 times h squared plus 5 minus 5 minus 5 times h now this is the same thing as 2 times h cube and negative 6 times h squared negative 5 times h plus 6 times h is equal to 2 plus h and 5 minus 2 is equal to 3, right? So f of a plus h would be the same thing as 2 times h cubed minus 6 times h squared plus h plus 3. <coughs> and then you can, <coughs> you can use the same formula, meaning that m is equal to f prime of f prime of a which is equal to negative 1 is the same thing as the limit of f of uh, negative 1 plus h minus f of negative 1 over h as h approaches 0 which is the same thing as the limit of f of negative 1 plus h is the same thing as this is f of negative 1 plus h, right? So that, that would be the same thing as 2 times h cubed minus 6 times h squared plus h plus 3 minus f of negative 1. f of negative 1 is the same thing as 3, so that's uh, minus 3 over h as h approaches 0. These two you can cancel out. From the numerator, you can take out an h, so that's the limit of basically h times 2 times h squared minus 6 times h plus 1 over h as h approaches 0. These two you can cancel out. And as h approaches 0, this becomes 0. And this becomes 0, so that's, that's basically a positive 1, which is equal to the slope of the line, right? Now the line goes through this point, which is negative 1 comma 3. So m is equal to 1, and negative 1 comma 3 is the point that the line goes through, right? So you can write y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, 
which means that you can write y minus 3 is equal to 1 times x minus x1 x plus 1 so y is equal to x uh, 3 plus 1 is equal to 4 that's the equation of the of the line right? now if you graph this this function which is basically x or y is equal to 2 times x cubed minus 5 times x this is essentially your, your graph and the, the equation of the line is y is equal to and the point is negative 1 comma 3 and the, the equation of the line is y is equal to x plus 4 you can see that the that the that the line goes through the graph of the function at this point exactly at this point and it is has the same slope as the as the graph of the function. At this point you see no difference between essentially the line and the graph of the function, right? Another example would be Another example would be y is equal to the square root of x at the point 1 comma 1. Now the square root function, the square root function is qrt of x at the point 1 comma 1 would be this point over here. And the slope of the function is somewhere about 2, I suppose, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. At 1, 1, the slope of this line going through the graph of the function, it might be 2. So if I write basically y minus 1 is equal to m times x minus 1. And if I set the value to 2, for example, like Zero point five, excuse me, zero point five, not two, but zero point five. If you said the essentially, you can see that the, the slope must be zero point five at this point. So let's calculate this. So again, we calculate essentially f prime of a is equal to m is equal to the limit of. Uh, basically f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches 0. Now a is equal to 1 so f of 1 is equal to f of a is equal to 1 and f uh, of a plus h in this case would be f of 1 plus h which is the same thing as basically the square root of 1 plus h and uh, then the rest you can calculate meaning that f prime of 1 would be equal to the limit of f of a plus h which is f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h as h approaches 0 which is the same thing as the limit of f of 1 plus h is the square root of 1 plus h minus f of 1 is equal to 1 over h as h approaches 0 and then you need to calculate this limit now to calculate this limit what you need to do is that you need to essentially rationalize the numerator so as to take the take your h out of the square root function and then cancel out the h in the numerator and denominator so that you can take the limit so i'm going to write this as the limit of basically the square root of 1 plus h minus 1 and then multiply this by its by its own conjugate which is 
the square root of 1 plus h plus 1 over basic the h times the same thing which is the square root of 1 plus h plus 1 right as h approaches 0 now you can see that the numerator has become something in the form a minus b times a plus b which is the same thing as a squared minus b squared so this is the same thing as a squared minus b squared which is the same thing as the square root of 1 plus h raised to the second power minus 1 squared which is equal to 1 and this is the same thing as 1 plus h minus 1 which is the same thing as h right which is the same thing as h so the numerator becomes h so that's the limit of basic the h over h times the square root of 1 plus h plus 1 uh, as h approaches 0 these two you can cancel out as h approaches 0 this becomes the square root of 1 which is 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 so that's 1 over 2 right so m is equal to 1 over 2 and the line goes through the point 1 comma 1 right the line goes through the point 1 comma 1 which means that y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 is the equation of the line so y minus 1 is equal to 1 half times x minus 1 that's the equation of your line and you can see the exact we have the exact same equation here y minus 1 is equal to 0 0.5 or 1 half times x minus 1 right? another function that we have here is um, question number question number 8 question number 8 which is um, y is equal to 2x over x plus 1 all the squared and the point is 0 comma 0 now this function is not uh, defined at x is equal to negative 1 at x is equal to negative 1 this function is not defined meaning that if I write over here if I write 2x over basic t x plus 1 raised to the second power you can see that the function is not defined at x is equal to negative 1 you get a, a, a the vertical asymptote of the function at this point and we have a horizontal asymptote as well which is at x at y is equal to 0 <coughs> so um, now at the point 0 comma 0 which is this point over here you can see that um, you can you can guess you can guess essentially the the slope of the line as um, something like this you could say that basically y minus y, y minus 0 which is y is equal to m which is which is m times x minus 0 which is m times x and do a slider for m and somewhere around the slope must be very close to 2 as you can see 
the slope must be very close to 2. Okay. Now, to calculate this slope, you can calculate basically um, m is equal to the limit of basically f of a plus um, you can of course write it as the as f of f prime of a which is the same thing as the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a uh, over h as h approaches zero now since a is equal to zero f of h f of a plus h would be equal to f of h which is the same thing as basically 2 times h over h plus 1 raised to the second power and f of a would be equal to f of a would be equal to f of 0 which is equal to 0 right so then the and the value of a is equal to 0 of course so then you could say that the m m is equal to f prime of 0 which is equal to the limit of f of a plus h which is f of h which is this 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 fraction over here 2h over h plus 1 whole squared um, minus minus f of basically f of a which is equal to 0 over h as h approaches 0 this is the same thing as the limit of basically 2h over h plus 1 whole squared times the reciprocal of this which is 1 over h as h approaches 0 h and h you can cancel out as h approaches 0 this becomes basically 1 squared which is equal to 1 so this is equal to 2 the same number that we got in the on the calculator right so that means that m is equal to uh, 2 and as a result the point is 0 comma 0 and m is equal to 2 so the, the, the line is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 and so y is equal to 2 times x is the equation of the line. So these are simple questions, but uh, the important thing here is to understand essentially what the situation represents. What is what is the slope of the line? What is the what what is the equation of the line, and so on and so forth. Other than that, there is um, you can see that uh, um, there is. I mean, it, it's it's all. Um, really only basic mathematics meaning that uh, it's it's all about um, two-dimensional coordinate geometry and that sort of thing that you that, that you study in class 8 class 9 class 10 in in the in, in in essentially in high school not 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 anything more than that really So people usually have the have this idea that calculus is 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 very difficult or or, or complicated thing, but as you can see, it's really not because it's it's just simple basic mathematics. Mm. The problem with um, the problem with with us as people is that. Um, is that basically the way that we go through our education we don't get the chance to learn our basic mathematics our basic mathematics we just simply don't learn that there is not enough time there is other problems and so when we, when we get to um, essentially calculus you could think of calculus as an application of all of those things that you might have that you should that you should have learned essentially in your in your in uh, class six seven eight nine and so on and so forth um, since we don't get the chance to learn all of those things 
then when we when it comes to the to the application of those things then sometimes we get into trouble now question number nine question number nine is find the slope of the tangent to the curve y is equal to three plus four times x squared minus two times x cubed at the point at x is equal to a you want to find the slope of the tangent at this at this point to this curve and this is part a part b is find the equations of tangent lines at, at the points um, 1 point 1 comma 5 and 2 comma 3 And then graph the curve and both tangents on the, on the common screen. Okay. Now, the point of this question is to show you that that you don't have to um, that that essentially that that you don't have to 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 calculate the tangent line the slope of the tangent line twice for two points as you can see over here for example you want essentially your your function is this function over here right let me show you basically what this question represents because using this you will be able to understand um, what is the significance of the of the derivative as a function right um meaning that what what that what i mean to say is that is that if you have for example this function over here which is y is equal to 3 plus 4 times x squared minus 2 times x cubed right which is this function over here 3 plus 4 times x squared minus 2 times x cube which is this function over here and we have two points for example one comma five and also another point which is two comma three there are these two points on the graph of this function and this at this point essentially the graph has some specific basically um, some specific um, slope at this point the slope changes at this point the slope is positive which means that the function is increasing at this point the slope becomes negative which means that the function is de decreasing right now if i want to find the equation of the the equation of the of the line tangent to the graph of the function at this point I will have to calculate the slope of the, the tangent line at this point. Likewise, if I want to calculate the slope of the tangent line at this point, I will have to calculate the, the slope of the tangent line at this point one more time. And then, well, using the same logic, you can see that if I want to calculate the slope of the tangent line at this point, I will have to calculate the, the slope one more time over here, one more time over here, one more time, and so on and so forth. And every time that I that I need to, to calculate the slope of the tangent line, I will have to use basically the formula m is equal to f prime of a is equal to the limit of basically f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero, right? So many times 
calculating the same thing over and over again. So instead what I could do is that I could I could I could calculate essentially the slope of slope of the tangent line not in terms of some particular number for example one two three and so on and so forth I could calculate the the slope in terms of a which is a general number which is in the in the in the domain of the function and this a could represent any number in the domain of the function and then when I want to when I want to basically to, to calculate the, the tangent line at negative one I set x is equal to negative one when I want to calculate the, tan the slope of the tangent line as negative two I set x is equal to negative two and so on and so forth that way I will have um, I will I will calculate the the, tan the slope of the tangent line only once and then I get a a, a basically relationship in terms of in terms of a and then in that relationship I can substitute the values of a over and over again and, and get the, uh, the the slope of the tangent line at different points in the in the domain of the function right so that's that's what I'm going to do now so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that well okay so my function is well f of x is f of x is equal to 3 plus 4 times x squared minus 2 times x cubed and the point is of course a and f of a is equal to f of a right so the point is a comma f of a this a could be any point in the in the domain of the function right and then calculate the the slope of the line for all of these a's meaning that i could say that basic so the only thing that I need to calculate now is f of a plus h for this function. So f of a plus h would be the same thing as 3 plus 4 times a plus h all the squared minus 2 times minus 2 times a plus h raised to the third power, right? So once so let's just calculate this. This is the same thing as 3 plus 4 times basically a squared plus h squared plus 2 times a h. Plus 2 times a h. And over here I have negative 2 times and then this would be the same thing as a plus b. All cube is the same thing as a cube plus b cube plus basically 3 times a squared b plus 3 ab squared right so this would be the same thing as uh, basically a cube plus h cube plus 3 times a squared h plus 3 times a h squared right and then you can expand all of this meaning that you can write this as basically 3 plus 4 times a squared plus 4 times h squared plus 8 times a h minus 2 times a cube minus 2 times h cube minus 6 times a squared h minus 6 times a h squared right and then let's see if we can simplify this. So you have 3. So you have no constant anymore. a squared, a cube, and so on. h squared. We don't have h squared here. a h, a h, a cube. So this is the, this is as simple as it, as it, as it gets, right? So, then basically the based on this we can say that m is equal to f prime of a is equal to the limit of f of a plus h which is this this whole thing over here minus f of a f of a is the same thing as um now we need to calculate f of a as well i didn't see that coming f of a 
f of a is the same thing as based on this function it's the same thing as 3 plus 4 times a squared minus 2 times a cubed so the limit of so essentially the m is equal to f prime of a is equal to the limit of basically f of a plus h which is this whole thing over here 3 plus 4 times a squared plus 4 times h squared plus h times a, a x times 8 times a h minus 2 times a cube minus 2 times h cube minus 6 times a squared h minus 6 times a h squared minus f of a minus this whole thing so that's negative 3 negative 4 times a squared plus 2 times a cube over h as h approaches 0 now 3 and negative 3 you can cancel out 4 times a squared negative 4 times a squared you can cancel out 2 times a cube negative 2 times a cube you can cancel out right so then you can write this as the limit of basically 4 times h squared plus 8 times a h minus 2 times h cube minus 6 6 times a squared h minus 6 times a h squared over h as h approaches 0 from the numerator you can take an h out you can write this as the limit of basically h times 4 times h plus 8 times a minus 2 times h is squared minus 6 times a squared minus 6 times a h over h as h approaches 0 and cancel these two out as h approaches 0 this goes to 0 this goes to 0 this goes to 0 what remains is 8 times a minus 6 times a squared or you can write it as 8 times um, let's keep it as basically as this as this expression over here so this is the m which is f prime of a right so now we know essentially now as you can see we have calculated the slope of the line, the tangent line, at any point A in terms of some expression which involves only A, meaning that now if A is equal to if A is equal to 1, I can set A is equal to 1. If A is equal to 2, I can set A is equal to 2 in this relationship over here and then calculate very easily what is the slope of the line at each of those points essentially, right? Now, if a uh, the equation of the tangent line at point one comma five, the equation of the tangent line at point one comma five, which implies that a is equal to one, right? So, if a is equal to one, then m is equal to f prime of one is equal to 8 times 1 is equal to 8 minus 6 times 1 squared which is equal to 6 which is equal to 2 so the slope is 2 at that point right so then you can say that y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 which means that basically y minus y1 which is equal to 5 is equal to m which is equal to 2 times x minus 1 which means that y minus 5 is equal to 2x minus 2 which means that y is equal to 2x uh, negative 2 plus 5 minus 2 is equal to 3 so that's 2x plus 3 that's the equation of the line at that point so let's let's write this over here equation of that of the line at this point is is this equation over here which is y is equal to 2x plus 3 now in the exact same way the equation of of the tangent line 
tangent line at the point 2 comma 3 at the point 2 comma 3 that implies that a is equal to 2 which means that basically f prime of 2 is equal to a times 2 is equal to 16 minus 6 times uh, 2 squared is equal to 4 which is the same thing as 16 minus 24 24 minus 16 is the same thing as 8 right so then the equation of the line is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 hopefully I haven't made any mistakes there um, 8 times 2 is equal to 16 minus 6 times a squared. a squared is equal to 4. 4 times 6 is at negative 24. Negative, that's a negative, that's a negative 8. So that, that means that y minus y1, y minus 3 is equal to negative 8 times x minus 2. That's the equation of your line. You can simplify it, of course. You can write it as y minus 3 is equal to negative 8x plus 16. And then y is equal to negative 8x. Uh, 16 plus 6 is equal to 19. That should be the equation of the line, right? Now, if I graph the line over here the two equations that we got was y is equal to 2x plus 3 which is the equation of the line at this point at 1 comma 5 1 comma 5 and y is equal to negative 8x plus 19 which is the equation of the line at this point as you can see this line has the exact same slope as the graph of the function at this point and this line has hopefully the exact same slope of the function at this point and that is um, that is basically the well first of all it's 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 um, I mean, that's, that's just simply the beauty of mathematics. It's really... Um, it's really fascinating that, that in mathematics, you can... I mean, everything fits together in the most beautiful in the most beautiful beautiful way possible i mean i i mean what i what i mean to say is that have you have you have you ever found any system as elegant as mathematics it's just not possible to do that anyhow okay um so this was question number Question number nine. In the next video, we will talk about question number 10. Thank you.